Hello everyone and welcome to tutorial 1 of my new Voxel Engine tutorial series where we are actually going to start building our render engine and render our first quad onto the screen and you can actually render any two dimensional shape onto the screen after this video so before we actually jump into the code um, there's just a couple of things that has to be explained first such as the OpenGL coordinate system and how we can store vertices into memory. So let's first talk about the OpenGL coordinate system. So as you can see in OpenGL, um, if you now imagine that the little blue quad is your screen, then the center of your screen will be the zero, zero position. So that will be your 0 in X and 0 in Y position, so the starting point. Now that's the center of the screen. It's usually in the, usually people would think that that will be your bottom left or something like that. It's never the center, but in OpenGL things are a little bit different. And this is important, especially when we're going to start doing perspective division to make things 3D. Um, then we don't have to do some extra math because the center of the screen is already zero so that's also very important so your top left corner will be one in x and one in y your bottom left um, right i mean will be one in x and minus one in y and then your bottom left should be minus one and minus one in x and y and your top left corner should be minus 1 in X and 1 in Y. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for the OpenGL coordinate system. So next we need to talk about the quad that we're going to render. And this is basically what its vertices are going to look like. So as you can see, we have 0, 0,5 and 0, 0,5 because the top left corner is 1 and 1. So 0, 0,5 in X and Y should give us, should put the vertice halfway between the center point and the top, top right corner. And that should give us something like this. As you can see, the signs are exactly the same as the corners to give us a quad. But you need to remember that in games, we always render in triangles. So that will make things a little trickier. So for to render a quad, we're basically going to render two triangles um, over each, uh, well, next to each other, which will look like this. So they will share some vertices. As you can see, this point, this vertice, um, this point on the quad sh would share two vertices, as well as for the top left. Um, vertice of the quad. So the way in which we're going to render this is we're going to give it the first vertice of the first triangle, then the second vertice and the third one. And then also the first vertice of the second triangle, which will be the same as the last vertice of the previous triangle. And then we'll give it the top right corner and the f um, top left corner which vertice will be the same as the first vertice of the first triangle. So it's a little weird. Um, as you can see, we're rendering the same vertice multiple times, which can be a problem, especially when you're trying to render large models. Then um, it will take up a huge amount of space in memory, which is unnecessary. But we will fix that problem in the next video because it's a little bit too much to get done in one single video. So let's talk about storing the quad's vertices into memory. So to do that, we're basically going to store the vertices into a buffer, which is called a vertex buffer object in OpenGL, and also known as a VBO. And that are basically what we're going to be using right throughout the series to store any sort of model data that we need to store or render is going to be stored into VBOs. So that's basically going to store the array of vertices that we're going to need. So to store the triangle into them, we can basically just copy the vertices. So 
we start off with the first triangle and we want the top left corner so we copy its vertices and store it into the VBO so let me just do that and then you also need to do the bottom left vertice and we can put it in the VBO now this is just to demonstrate how it's basically what is basically going to be what's basically going to look like so that you don't get confused later so then the last vertice of the first triangle has to be stored and once that is finished we are going to store the second triangle so those are the three vertices of the first triangle as you can see now we need to store the second triangle and as you can see the first vertice of this triangle will be the bottom right vertice now as you can see these two this vertice right here and this one are exactly the same because they are sharing the same point so the second vertice has to come and then also finally the third one so once those are stored you can see that there are six vertices for a what that has only four points you will see we are storing six vertices into the VBO now in the next video we're going to be talking about storing only four vertices into the VBO but we're just going to connect them up in different ways so that they look like a triangle but they are just four vertices that we're storing into memory which is much more more efficient so it will render a little bit faster and use less space in memory which is going to be very important later on but we're not going to get into that right now so now that you know what a VBO is it's basically just a buffer that can store an array of let's say floats or integers or whatever we want to give it so then another thing we need to talk about is also VAOs now a VAO is a vertex array object and it contains a lot of attributes as you can see it's got it's an attribute 0 attribute 1 attribute 2 and 3 and they go on like that I'm not sure how many there are but I'm sure there are quite a lot of them so what we can do with a VAO is we can store a VBO into one of the attributes of the VAO so let's say we want to store this VBO into attribute 0 of the VAO then we can just call um, a function and we put in attribute 0 and we can then just get the vertices from attribute 0 at any time and those will be the vertices that are stored into the VBO so they are quite a nice tool to have in OpenGL so let's talk about accessing data from VAOs and VBOs so the first thing that you always do to store data into VBOs and VAOs is to create a VAO. And there's an OpenGL function called glgenVertexArrays that can do that for you. So this function will create a VAO and then return its ID so that we know with what VAO we're currently working with. So after you created a VAO, to be able to use it, you need to first bind the VAO. And we do that calling GL bind vertex arrays. Um, that will bind the VAO. Now if you've got a VAO created and you've got it bound, you can create the, VA, the VBO. And you do that calling the GL gen buffers function which will create a VBO and same as the VAO this function creates a VBO and return its ID so the next thing that has to happen is you need to bind the VBO once it's created it has to be bound for us to be able to use it
So then once you've got a VAO created, bound, you've created a VAO and it's um, bound, then it's time to store the data into the VBO. And uh, there's a function called GL buffer data that can store any sort of array into a VBO. And once you've got data into that VBO, it's time to store the VBO into the VAO using the GL vertex at your pointer function that will point this VBO to the VAO or to, the, to an attribute in the VAO. So then you can choose in which attribute of the VAO you want to store the VBO. Now for the purpose of this video, we're just going to be using attribute 0 of the VAO. And once you're finished storing data into them and you're done with the VAOs and VBOs, it's always time to unbind them. So that OpenGL knows that you're finished with them. So that is pretty much it. Let's go and jump right into the code inside of Eclipse to implement this into our code. So once you're in Eclipse, you can go to the um, display manager class and you can comment out the set display mode line to make the display full screen if you want it full screen, but I'm not going to make mine full screen for the purpose of these videos. So first we need to create a new package. Um, so create a new package, call it models, which is going to contain all the models in the game. So create a new class inside that package called raw model, which will store the raw model data. So that will be the vertices um, of a single model without any textures or anything. So we need two variables for this one, um, which is the VAO ID and the vertex count, um, which is what we're going to need when we're trying to render. And in the constructor, you can just put those variables as parameters, and then we can set them in the constructor like this. And once you've got that done, you can basically just um, hold shift alt and s on your keyboard to go to and then select generate getters and setters and then we want to select all the getters and that will create two getters um, for those variables when we're going to try to render them so in the render engine we need to create a new class called the loader which will be in charge of loading anything into memory so that means when we're trying to load models or textures or anything, it's going to be handled in the loader class. So we need to create a couple of methods in here to be able to load up models. So the first one is um, the load to VA VAO method, which will load vertices into VAOs and VBOs. So then we also need a method to create a VAO and that will return its ID. And then we need another method to store, which is called store data in attribute list. And this method will store all the vertices into v a VBO and then store the VBO inside attribute zero of the VAO. So you can just, and this takes in the float array of data, the attribute number of the VAO that we want to store it in, and the dimensions is basically just um, the dimensions of the data. So if it's, is it one dimensional, two dimensional, or whatever. And then we need a cleanup method, which is the final method to clean up the uh, vertices and delete them from memory. So then in the create uh, VAO method, we can create a VAO. Um, um, so we call GL Gen Vertex Arrays to create the VAO and return its ID and store it in the VAO ID. So then we need to call GL um, Bind Vertex Arrays to bind the VAO so that we can use it. So we just put the VA, VAO ID in there and then we just return it. And then the next thing to do is to program the store data in attribute list method. 
So the first thing that we need to do is to create a VBO and then to bind it. So we call glgen buffers to bind the VAO and store its ID in the VBO ID. And then we need to call GL bind buffer and the target should be GL array buffer because this is an array buffer. So for the buffer, we just put the VBO ID in there. And now that it's bound, we can store data into it by calling GL buffer data. And the target is once again GL array buffer because we're just storing vertices in there. And then it takes in the data and the usage. Uh, we just wants to know if it's static or dynamic data. And it's static because we're never going to change it. So we call GL static draw. And you'll see that there's a little bit of an error. And that is because the data can't just take in a float array. It has to be stored in a float buffer first. So we need to create a float buffer and store the float array into the float buffer before we can store it into the VBO. So let's create a method that will store a float array into a float buffer. So we call this method store data in float buffer and this takes in the float array of data that we want to store. So then create the float buffer and we do that by calling bufferutils.create uh, dot create float buffer and the size is the data dot length and then we need to put the data into the buffer by calling data dot put and then we just put the data into the buffer and then we need to call buffer dot flip to make the buffer readable and then we just return the buffer so now that we can store vert uh, data into float buffer. Let's create a float buffer and we're just going to call it buffer and we say store data in float buffer and then we just put the data in there that we want to store. And now that it's stored into a float buffer, we just put the buffer inside of the data. And that is it. The float array is stored into a VBO. So the next thing to do is to store the VA, VBO in the first attribute of the VAO. So we call GL vertex attrib pointer. We need to take the last one. So for the index um, parameter, we just put the attribute number in there. For the size, um, it's the dimension. So it wants to know what dimensional data we're storing. And for the type, it's float. So we call a GL float for that. And then it wants to know if it's normalized, and it isn't, so we say false. And then the stride is zero, and the buffer offset is also just zero. So next, we need to unbind the buffer by calling GL bind buffer, and the target is once again GL array buffer. And instead of put, putting a buffer in there, we put zero to unbind the buffer. And that is it for the store data and attribute list method. So the next thing that we can do is we can program the load to VAO method. So this basically just um, uses a VAO. So we create an integer VAO ID and this is just, then we call create VAO, which will create and bind a VAO. And then we call store data in attribute list to store the vertices into attribute zero. So we put, in, put the vertices in there, which is the float array. So we put vertices and we store that in attribute number zero of the VAO. So we put a zero and then it wants to know the dimensions and we're storing three dimensional data. So just put a three there. And after we're finished, we need to unbind the VAO by calling gel bind vertex array and then just putting a zero. So now let's return the raw model data. So we do that. Um, so we just create a new raw model and then that just takes in the VAO ID and the ver length of the vertices. And then we need to program the cleanup method to do a bit of memory management. So we create two array lists of all the VAOs and VBOs. So create a new array list of VAOs. 
there, we're just, just going to contain all the VAO IDs that we're using. And then we need to create another array list for the VBOs. And once those are created, we need to and close that. And then we need to just import those lists. And and once that that's done, you can just we need to go to the cleanup method, and we we're gonna do a bit of uh, for each loops to clear all of the. VAOs and VBOs. So we say for each VAO in the VAOs list, we call GL delete vertex arrays, which will delete the VAOs in that list. And then we do the same for the VBOs. We say for each VBO in VBOs, we call GL delete buffers which will delete all of the VBOs in the list. So now we need to actually add the VAOs to VAO to the list of VAOs. So in the create VAO method, we call VAOs dot um, add, or not add all, just add. And we put the VAO ID in there. And now we need to do the same for the VBO. So we just say vbos.add and we put the vbo id in there and that's finished so that's the loader class pretty much done so the next thing we need to do is to create the actual entity renderer which will render all of the models in the scene so create a new class called entity renderer which will render those models so in there, we're just going to have one method for now called the render method. And this takes in the model that we're going to render. So raw model model. And we need to bind the VIO again before we can access its vertices. So we call gel bind vertex array and then model.get VIO ID. That will give us the VAO. And then we need to enable attribute one of the VAO so that we can access its data. Because if you remember, we stored that in attribute zero. So we enable attribute zero. So the next thing we need to do is to actually render the data by calling JL draw arrays, and that will draw those vertices on the screen. And for the mode, we're rendering triangles, so we say GL triangles. And it wants to know where it should start. It should start at zero, and the count is how many vertices there are, and that's model.get vertex count. So the next thing we need to do is to disable attribute zero after we render it. So we disable it, and then we unbind the VAO by putting a zero in the function. Then we need to go to the master renderer and also create a render method in there, which will call the render method from the entity renderer. So create a new render method. And this once again takes in the model that we're trying to render. And we need to import that. And then we just call entity renderer dot render. And uh, I forgot to make it static. So let's go back to the entity renderer and make it static. So make sure it's public static void render and not just public void. It has to be static before we can access it in the master render. So now we can just say dot render and put the model in there and that's done. So now we can go to the main game loop and we first need to create the loader. So create a new instance of the loader class and we need to import that so let's import that and now we need to create a float array of vertices that we're going to render on the screen and I'm gonna copy those directly from the presentation so from the vertices that I showed you here in the presentation I'm gonna just copy them and put them in the float array So let's put in those vertices. So the first one is 
minus 0 0.5 in x, 0 0.5 in y, and 0 for a z component because we're completely two dimensional at the moment. Um, changing the z position would not make a difference yet because we did not do perspective division in our rendering math yet. That will come after shaders. So we put that. So after those vertices are in the float array, we can create the raw model. And you might notice some of the vertices are the same. But those, that is for because we have more than one triangle points at the same vertices. So let's create the model by calling the loader.loadvao method and put the vertices in there. So now import the raw model and that's done. So now I can just render it. So after the prepare method, we call renderer.render and just put the model in there. So now the model will render. But before we run that, we need to remember to clean, call the cleanup method in the loader class. So we first need to um, create another um, loader. So we create a, we need one that is public and static. So before the main method, we create a new uh, loader called loader1. And just set it to null for now. And then we set loader1 to the loader. Now, this is a little messy, uh, messy way of doing this. Um, later, we're going to find a more efficient way of doing this. But for now, just um, set it like that. So then we need to go to the display manager. And before we quit the game, so in the close display method, right before we exit the game, we need to call main game loop dot loader one dot clean up to clean up those vertices so that they won't stay in RAM forever. And that is it. Now if we go ahead and run that, you should have a quad rendered onto the screen. And that is it for this video. Um, so you've got that. Um, play around with those vertices, see what kind of weird shapes you can get, and just make sure that you understand what's going on, actually. And then, yeah, then I will see you all in the next video. Um, so in the next video, we're going to render with index buffers, to improve our rendering system and we're also going to be talking about shaders then so that is it for this video um, play around with those vertices make sure um, watch this video again to make sure that you know what's going on because this was quite a lot to take in and then yeah I will see you all next time thanks for watching this video